Roger from Mud Fossil University is convinced that old rocks are the ancient remains of giant creatures. From dragons to snakes to fish. But today, Roger has decided that he's found something else. A human hybrid. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, on with today's video, and we revisit our resident university lecturer in Roger from Mud Fossil U. He thinks that a new human hybrid species has been discovered. Of course it has, Roger. Of course it has. Away we go. Okay, my friends, I always issue what I call the 15 minute challenge. You go out and if you can't find a mud fossil within 15 minutes, I want to know why. That would be because mud fossils aren't a thing, are they? So Tishy Egerton took me up on it. She walked out and in 15 minutes, she came across a foot that was just stuck right into that. And she lifted it out and took a picture because it's laying right on the top of the surface. And I can see these are bones, I believe. This was in, a, you see the coloration of it? Like that's, that's mineral, you know, that's blood metals in there. That's a puddle, Roger. But anyway, she just picked it right up. And you want to see what it looked like when she picked it up? This was it right here. No, li listen to this now. That, that's a foot. Really? Because it looks like a rock with a very vague foot shape. Now that almost looks like a wing nut or something holding the, the pad which would have been underneath on. It's got some very strange architecture, but it is, it's all biological and it has springs and everything built into it as, as the one she has found in that area. And these are the springs. These, this is one and another one she found and they erode and then on the side you can see they don't have bones They don't have bones like we have. We have bones They have springs I'm not sure that springs would do the same job as bones. Everybody would be pretty wibbly wobbly, wouldn't they? You see this? That bone is the right bone just like this bone that bone is correct, and that strap is correct, and it would lead right up to a bone that would be sitting in this saddle. Something similar to like this type of a bone would be sitting in that saddle, and this would be holding it there so that it could rock around, but it couldn't pull off this way. So, And, and I will show you, there's a wrinkle zone in there. That is a tendon. It was a tendon just exactly like this. I'm, I got a better shot of this. Now, so mine is completely flawless. Hers are in all different states of deco decomposition. She sent me all this stuff. I have it here. When you say flawless, do you mean a pareidolia fueled delusion? Uh, now let me show you what this, this looks like when you get really into the details. This is it right here. Now remember we talked about the heel bone. Uh, and there's, there's that strap. You see the strap? Same strap. And you see how it's all bubbly looking here? That's what's called a wrinkle zone. That is always under tension. Tendons are under tension. And it, and boing, it snapped. Now, thanks for the anatomy lesson there, Roger. What's going on here? I'm not certain. But I think they have these little tabs and then wires or something that run around to other tabs. Like, I think these do. You see that tab right there? I think that's a tab, and I think that little hole was connected to some form of a wire that ran around here up to this tab, and that's wire. Now, I'm not sure of this, but the reason I say this is that when you, the, the foot would go this way, the little bumpers are sticking out, the no toes, are, there's little, little tabs in there, but they're going to bump up against this solid plate here. It's amazing what one can imagine about a simple rock, isn't it? Although this particular rock looks like it might have some ammonite shaped fossils in there. Now I'm not an expert on this, but if anyone in the comments wants to confirm or deny that or tell me exactly what they are, that would be great. And force that solid plate, which you two them together, force it to go up this way, which would twist it, because that's a pin. It's not just going to go up, everything's going to go up. It's going to twist on that pin. It's a pin, and that's a pin too. 
Those aren't going to move. So that twist. Now what would happen? This is part of this. So when this twists, this has to go down this way. So it pulls this thing in this way. So now we've got this thing loaded up, spring loaded. It wants to get back to where it started from. So and now it's sp already spring loaded. If you really hammered it, it would start pulling this thing and it would spring load this into this cavity. So what you're suggesting here, Roger, is basically this human hybrid could jump really, really, really high. All right, because of this wire attaching to that. That's the only thing that brings these two together that I can find. This is a bumper pad, so that when it comes, it, it's, a, it's a gooey bumper pad, it looks like to me. So you got a pin that's going to go this way. And if you normally walk walking just a little bit like this, but all of a sudden you go wham on the front, and it goes roll. And it pulls really tight into here. So now you got this one loaded. Now this one loads. So you got a double load, and it just lays back down when when you take it off. Simple as that. But boy, I tell you, that looks like a little tab to me. And same thing here. And it looks like a little wire, and that looks like a little wire. And these are pins. And that's a heel, and that's another one. It looks like a damn wire to me. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. That's how you should have started this whole video. I don't know. I do not know at this point. All I know is the, this was a foot, and that's a heel, and that's that strap, that tendon, that would have led up to the bone. And she went out and found these in 15 minutes. And she got a ton of them. These are all hers. These are all tissues. These, this one here has all of the little toes just fell out like little sausages or something. I don't know. And here's an eroded one. Here's another eroded one with the back is all eroded on. And they come like two little straps in the back and then all that little springy stuff going on. I don't know. I'm amazed at how many rocks you can find that look like feet. A lot to look into. And then, of course, this has the actual blood supply looking stuff. Same thing as my foot. See, very similar. It's got that look to it, and there's that where the, where the heavy duty blood is. Now, silly me thinking he was referring to his actual foot. I believe this would have been encapsulated all around just like mine is at one time. But I, I you know, I, there's so many varieties of these. And when I show you the next one, this is going to knock your socks off. Well, they're already off, Roger, from the first reveal. Because it, it, it's just too spectacular to believe, but it's, I got it right here and I'm going to show it to you in a second. Um, again, there's so much we don't know. There is so much we don't know that happened not too long ago in the past. These things, all my stuff, basically almost all of it came right on the surface, above the surface, or just barely below the surface. This is no digging deep hundreds of feet down to find these things. They're just laying there. The same thing with that. Nobody put that there. That's been there since, I believe, the Great Flood. Ah, I wonder which flood he's talking about here. And I believe that's what happened to all of these things, and that's why, and Velikovsky did all the research on this, that in the ancient past, there was a Great Flood, and that's what created all these sea peoples. You see this? This is, this is almost impossible to miss. Invasion and migrations 1200 BC. Velikovsky says it was about 1500 BC that the whole world was destroyed. Now, all of a sudden, these P sea peoples, these are the sea peoples. Sea peoples. Where did they come from? Nobody knows. Nobody has any idea. Just hazarding a guess here, Roger, but if they're called the sea people, perhaps they're from the islands from the sea? Sea peoples, including Luca, Le Sheridan, Webster, attacked unsuccessfully into Egypt. Now, nobody has any idea where those people came from. I believe those were the Atlanteans that regrouped and started to attack everywhere. And there we go, everyone. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it invariably does. The Atlanteans indeed, Roger. Dear, oh dear. Well, there we go, everyone. Roger never fails to disappoint, does he? But for today, this Tim Ford Tuesday, we are all done and dusted. Thanks so much for watching today. Truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider hitting the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I know about half of you that watch do not subscribe. Naughty, naughty. And of course, if you really, really, really enjoyed it, hit that like button too. 
I've been Simon and Dan, have yourselves a cracking week and I'll see you on Friday for the return of that deadly duo, Peter and Pete. See you then. I, 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 I don't know.